So yeah, uh, the other night uh, we went to go see the Super Mario Brothers movie. No Ripley, right? We were just going out and this is a spoiler free. Yeah, I won't talk anything about crazy spoilers, but really wanted to see it, right? Just kind of excited in general. And Jessica was also super excited because Bowser's like her favorite Mario character, right? Granted, I'm not like a huge Mario fiend. You know, I'm, I'm just really not. I think the games are fun and I haven't played a ton of them. I recently just beat Mario 64, so I guess I was already like, you know, Mario'd. So I was kind of getting a little excited. I was like, this movie's probably gonna be a lot of fun. So even before going into it, all, all the all the, all the bullshit about the voice acting stuff, you know, the Chris Pratt, I was like, yeah, whatever, right? People are like sort of blowing this up beyond what it kind of is. And yeah, that was uh, that was actually true. I thought Chris Pratt did a, did a, did a completely fine job. Uh, in fact, did not really sound like him throughout the majority of the movie. So that was kind of a non-issue. I thought most of the voices were actually really great. Uh, even Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong was really great. So long story short, like I loved it. Such a feel good movie. And I don't even feel like it's made for me specifically because I'm not really like a hardcore Mario fan. Just absolutely delightful, you know? I felt like it was delightful. Going into it, I didn't really have expectations of any kind, like zero expectations of what's gonna be happening, why characters are doing what. Granted, they're literally trying to make story out of red guy that jumps and almost absolutely no incentive of story to characters outside of like, maybe like Mario RPG or Mario and Luigi games or Paper Mario. Right, Mario just has like no character in his stuff. So I do appreciate what they kind of do with some of the characters and try to give them incentives to, to exist to have character and also uh, reasons for existing in this world, which I thought was kind of dope, right? I, I don't think it's really a spoiler, but because uh, it's in the trailers, but yes, there's real life, you know, Brooklyn that the characters sort of come from, that they hail from. And then there's also the Mushroom Kingdom uh, and this alternate world, right? Which which is, of course, where they go. I really kind of dug it. Like it, it, it felt easy and simple. It didn't need to be more than what it was. It's effective, like simple storytelling with relatively simple characters. And there's other movies that have been like that, that I feel would get criticism uh, if it was, you know, not what it was like Top Gun Maverick. I think I like Top Gun Maverick because it's very simple. Like it, it doesn't try to, it doesn't try to overstep its bounds or anything. And I like that about it. You can, you literally see everything in that movie coming from like a mile away. And it's the same thing with this movie too. I don't really think it's a problem at any point. Although there are some highlights that are genuinely amazing. I don't want to say too much of what characters do, why they do it, how they do it. Bowser is incredible. <laughs> like the, the shit that they do with Bowser in this movie is so fucking funny. It sounds better if it was Charles Martinet. Dude, he's in the movie. i uh, trying not to spoil things. But yes, the Mario voice actors in the movie playing multiple characters uh, and, and the characters he's playing are incredibly cool that those are the characters he's playing. Bowser's absolutely amazing, right? Super good. What they end up really doing with him and giving him incentive and why he is the way he is related to certain characters. Oh God, man, it's so fucking funny. I found myself laughing out loud at like three to four jokes and quietly giggling at like several others, which is not what I was expecting. I was thinking that they were going to be very like minions about this and it was gonna be sort of like that. Uh, but weirdly enough, it's obviously a movie made for kids, but there's a lot of like, we're gonna die, I'm going to kill you, please kill us release us from like there's a lot of like huh <laughs> it's interesting right it's it, 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 it's a it's a film that like is for kids obviously but there's a lot of like i'm gonna kill that fucking mario <laughs> you know like not not that directly but there's there's a little bit of like adult humor sprinkled throughout all of it which is you know not uncommon in most kids things it's it was it was common in most things of me growing up, but I just noticed it. I was like, oh yeah, they don't actually softball a lot of this. This is funny. I loved it. I didn't feel like I was just going there to watch this, to watch it. I actually loved it. I thought it was an, an incredibly fun movie that was pretty sweet by the end of it. Made made them actually gave characters to some of the Mario characters and gave them enough 
enough moments of action and, you know, reasons to do things. That was fine with me. I did not find myself ever thinking like, oh, is this going to end or is this all of this stuff? There are a couple of like gripes that I that I have with it. Uh, one of them is there. There's a usage of real world music. 90% of it's amazing because the majority of the real world music outside of one referential song they use is uh, 80s music. It's almost entirely music out of the 80s. So to me that it almost like after a couple songs and I re realized they're still doing 80s stuff, I was like, oh, oh, I get it. It's it's a Mario movie. It's it's literally from the 80s. That's like the whole point of Mario is that he's a dude from like 1983 or something like that. So it seemed fine. Um, one of them wasn't, and that seemed kind of off. But the other parts which are not referential music and sound is really good. Like the musical score. Some of the moments they use to build up into the Mario theme around action or, you know, Mario-like themes are incredible. Like, this is so cool. Like, look what I'm even looking at here. This is so friggin' sick, man. There are moments where I was just like looking over at Kenny and Jessica. I'm like, look out, this is, this is so cool. I don't know, I was just kind of blown away by how most of the time, once again, not even a big Mario fan, but like the way things were happening just sort of like brought a tear to my eye that like, man, video games are here now. <laughs> like, holy shit. I, it's the same way that I felt when I walked into Universal Mario World where it's like, holy shit, man. I grew up like playing these games and now look where I'm at. It gave me that kind of a feeling again. It gave me like not even just, not just nostalgic, just like a lot of that shit. J just for perspective, I saw the first Sonic movie. I saw, I did not see Sonic 2. But I saw the first Sonic movie, and that never, never really happened during the first Sonic movie. Maybe during the opening Sega credits where they show all, like, the, the the crazy video game stuff. Maybe a little bit at the start. But the Sonic movie was like, okay, yeah, that was an effective movie carried hard by Jim Carrey. Uh, and granted, there's there are some performances in here that I think are actually really fun. Like, Luigi's great, and uh, I think Chris Pratt does a really good job as Mario, just in general. And then, obviously, Jack Black just absolutely slays it as Bowser. Some insanely funny shit that I did not think that they would do, right? There is some stuff that characters do in this movie that I did not think that they would do uh, in this film. I thought they would, I thought this would be much more generalized of a kind of film. And it really goes in on like Mario stuff, right? It really like kind of goes in on you, expecting you to know like how this stuff works and they could be really vanilla about it all, but they don't, right? They don't. They kind of expect you. You know what Mario is. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know. You know what Mario is. And I feel like that's some stuff that some people might have some criticisms about. Is that the movie sort of expects that you kind of know what the hell Mario does, right? Yes. In in this world, if they eat a power up, they lose it when they uh, when they when they take damage or get hit. And they just sort of expect you to accept that. And it's like, yeah. I mean, I get it. Sure. <laughs> it, it comes across as a absolute non-issue to someone like me, like an absolute non-issue. I think it'll get extremely good word of mouth. It's a very fun adventure kind of film. And I, I honestly can't wait to see it again. This is one of those situations where I really just want to watch it again, man. And there's Easter eggs all over the place, just absolutely all over the place. How about for Mario fans though? I don't know. I don't know what you'd be expecting. I don't know what Mario fans are expecting. As somebody that's like, you know, grew up around the Mario Mania, which was the Nintendo era of Mario Brothers, Mario 1 to Mario 3, I like lived in Mario Mania. I, I wasn't a Mario maniac. Yeah, that shit like took over the world for a while, you know? At least with a lot of those elements, I definitely picked up on a lot of stuff. Even for somebody that's not a diehard, hardcore Mario guy. I've just played Mario 64, so that might help with my overall like fandom having an impact in this situation, but I highly recommend you go see it. I really do. I highly recommend uh, you go check it out. I, I felt like it was just absolutely delightful and fun and enjoyable. Left me with a smile on my face like 75% of the movie. And I'm pretty critical about stuff in general. Like about the last, I think like the last video game movie I saw uh, just for perspective, was Mortal Kombat. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2021? Whenever the heck it came out. It had some neat, interesting moments, 
but I really didn't like it, dude. <laughs> I made a review on that back when it came out. I, I have way more criticisms than I do of things I like. And so so many of those th of those elements took me out of the movie where I like realize I'm watching a movie. And that didn't really happen too much when I was watching Mario movie. It wasn't. Ultimately, like it, it's setting up for a, a much bigger relationship that Illumination Universal and Nintendo are going to have because this is a Nintendo Pictures production. And that is already you know, it's an established thing right now. Long story short, we already know where this is eventually going to go. There's eventually going to go uh, into places that might not just be Mario into other Nintendo fandoms. And what I truly hope this spawns, because the movie's already made like $250 million in its first weekend or some crazy shit, right? It's already made just an absolute r ridiculous amount of money in its first like few days of it being out. I really hope this eventually not just gets other Nintendo movies made. I hope that this sort of incentivizes other big video game franchises to uh, go out into motion picture production and stuff and get a similar sort of uh, crew of people that love this stuff as much as these Mario fans loved making this Mario movie. If there's one thing I can tell you for sure, this wasn't just like, oh, we got the Mario IP, let's just shit something out, you know? No, it was, that this was made with an absolute insane amount of love and care. Like you, it, this really came from people that love this shit out of like Nintendo and Mario games. Obviously a Zelda, a Metroid, you know, a Donkey Kong movie, a Mario World movie, uh, you know, any, anything that could possibly follow this up. To me, I want Capcom with a similar styling as this film, if it was Illumination or whatever, right? How incredibly cool would it be if Capcom actually made an Astro Boy sort of tale about Mega Man? Like actually make a Mega Man movie in a similar situation as this? Oh my God, dude. If you had like a, a Mega Man movie with a, with, a, with a relatively similar direction as this Mario movie, with its like humor, with the way it like approaches things, not overly serious, just a fun, good time, God damn, dude, not Mega Man X, just like a Mega Man 2 to Mega Man 3 sort of situation and have it like a retelling of Astro Boy. Dude, it would be so fucking cool. So fucking cool. But granted, you know, Mega Man is not nearly as big as something like Mario. Um, I don't want like a Resident Evil regeneration, degeneration situation here. I really don't. I just, it, to me, it really, that would be so um, incredibly cool, man. So incredibly cool. But anyway, I absolutely loved it. I highly recommend you go see it. If you have kids, they'll probably love it as well. Adults that have any idea of anything, you know, that this stuff comes from, a lot of a lot of great moments and references, and I actually enjoyed what they did with these characters. I actually enjoyed seeing them be together and interact with each other. Mario and Luigi, you know, Mario and Peach, uh, Donkey Kong, Bowser especially. It was like an, in an incredible Spaceballs refer referential joke that killed me, dude. I, I was so fucking funny. My, my audience clapped. My audience actually clapped at the film and, and loved it as well. And I, I did too. I had a great time. I'm probably going to go see it in theaters again. Yeah, you won't be disappointed. That's for sure.